reading from Romans. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. A Reflection by Cynthia M. Campbell Paul's exhortation to hope comes in a particular context that turns this from a well-meaning bromide into a critically important word for the church today. Paul is writing to a community of believers in Rome, made up of both Jews and pagans, or Gentiles. They are together because Paul and others have been preaching a gospel whose message is that the promises of God that were made long ago to God's people Israel are now open to all because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The summary of all he has said in chapters 12 through 14 comes in 15:7. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. In order to give glory and praise to God, Paul says, Christ extended his welcome to all, Jew and Gentile alike. In order to fulfill God's promises, Christ embodied God's intention to widen the circle of divine love. Therefore, Paul's favorite word for making the transition from theology to ethics, if God has welcomed you, all of you, you are to be imitators of God. Life in Christian community is to be shaped by the practice of extending a welcome, of opening one's home and life, of giving hospitality to the other. Each side is to welcome the other. There is no longer insider and outsider. Now all are hosts and all are guests, because all have been welcomed by the infinite expanse of divine love question to consider throughout your day. To whom should you be extending Christ's welcome right now? Let us pray. God, I will welcome others even as you have welcomed me, knowing that your mercy is for all people. Amen.